Hey, you're watching Overtime Arcade. I'm Charlie, and I just wrapped up doing the 12 days of Arcade Miss, where I put out a new video every day for 12 straight days, and I am exhausted. If you missed any of that, uh, check the video description down below. I'll put a link to a playlist where you can catch up on anything you might have missed. But yeah, I am exhausted. Putting out new videos every day for 12 straight days took a lot out of me, in addition to the holidays and spending time with family and all of that. So, for today's video, I wanted to do something a little bit lighter weight, something that wouldn't take, you know, multiple days to uh, record and then a day or two to edit, which is usually what it takes to put one of these videos out that I do every week. And uh, yeah, so, you know, in the meantime, in the meantime, I've been collecting a bunch of PCBs and other parts for the projects that I've got coming in the new year. And I figured, hey, you know, some of these have, you know, I bought as allegedly tested and working. Some of them I bought as unworking PCBs. And I figured, why not test them out and see if I've got them working and, and know what to expect for all these projects coming this year. So in this episode, that's what we're going to do. We're going to test out all the PCBs that I've got waiting for projects that we'll be working on over the coming weeks and months. So uh, if that sounds like fun, why don't we head out to the garage and get started? Let's go! Overtime! Overtime. Okay, we're back out here in the garage and I've got a mess of PCBs to test here. I'm also actually watching uh, Brandon, AKA Advance 13 on uh, Twitch. He goes by Deckard995 over there. He's streaming live on Twitch right now. I think that's Super Street Fighter 2. Uh, I'm not exactly sure, but uh, yeah, I've got that playing. Oh no, it's hyper fighting. So uh, yeah, he's trying to 1cc that and I guess uh, starting over. So I've been watching that in the background while working on this stuff. So yeah, nice assortment of PCBs to test out over here, kind of running left to right. Uh, this is a complete working Taito Jungle King PCB set um, that I actually bought from a Claw Forum member named Curtis. So thank you, Curtis, uh, for that. Uh, great deal, tested and working. Uh, I mean, I haven't tested it yet, but he sold it as tested and working. Uh, this is a Frogger PCB set. Uh, that I actually got from Kazellis Arcade on YouTube. Uh, if you're not already subscribed to his, his channel, you should go and subscribe to it. It's great. Uh, he does a lot of awesome stuff. I think he just wrapped up a uh, Swimmer, which is a pretty cool uh, game. Uh, anyway, he's also an Overtime Arcade channel member. Uh, he sold this uh, Frogger board uh, set to me for a great price. Um, you know, he had tested it and the, the video and the controls and all that were working, but he couldn't get any sound. So I'm hoping I've got a solution uh, for that. Uh, this is also a Frogger PCB set. Uh, this one came from another Overtime Arcade channel member, Photoboy, who was actually so generous uh, as to gift this to me for free, so really appreciate it. Uh, completely untested. Uh, there's a bunch of notes here, uh, I guess from a previous repair attempt, uh, and I don't know if these were the before or after notes, if it was just diagnosed but then not fixed. Some of this stuff kind of doesn't make sense uh, given what I'm seeing, but um, uh, so I'm hoping, hoping this might work. And uh, of course we have our Future Spy PCB over here, uh, taken out of my cabinet. You know, I tested this out, I did a recent uh, pickup video, I won a Future Spy game at auction, a Sega Future Spy in a Bally Midway uh, dedicated uh, cabinet, and I couldn't get it to work in my cabinet, but I'm hoping maybe it's a power supply issue or a harness issue or something with my cabinet, and by hooking it up uh, in a JAMA uh, cabinet, I'll be able to uh, get it working properly. And then uh, this stack uh, over here is all Golden Tee PCBs, uh, mostly Golden Tee 99. I think there's uh, some other stuff maybe sprinkled in there. I think there's also some Silver Strike Bowling uh, PCBs, uh, which was the bowling game made by the creators of uh, Golden Tee, of course, Incredible Technologies. Um, in the middle, this brown box in the middle, I believe is my original uh, PCB from the cabinet, which is not working. Or again, or I couldn't get it to work in the cabinet. So I'm hoping, it, again, power supply or harness or some sort of cabinet specific uh, issue. This top one is a untested PCB for Golden T99, allegedly, uh, that I bought, again, for next to nothing from Jonovision on Clove. So we'll test this out and see what's going on with that. And this bottom box has uh, several PCBs <laughs> that were sent to me by Troy from Troy's Restorations on YouTube. Again, an awesome channel, a good friend of mine. Uh, you should go and subscribe to his channel if you're not already. Uh, he saw me struggle with the Golden Tee when I did that pickup video, you know, I forget how many months ago, 
And he's like, dude, I got a stack of unused golden tea PCBs. I'm just going to send them to you. I guess he had been doing a bunch of deconversions and uh, had all these PCBs lying around and they were going to get thrown out. So he figured just send them to Charlie and see if uh, he can get any of them working. So we'll test all of those out. Now, the golden tea PCBs and the Silver Strike Bowling PCBs are all JAMA. So those should be really relatively easy to just plug into a JAMA cabinet and test them out. No problem. But these other boards over here, these other four boards from three other games are not JAMA. So we need some sort of adapter to allow us to plug a, you know, a, a game PCB with a game specific or manufacturer specific um, pinout into a JAMA a, a connector, a, a JAMA uh, harness in a JAMA cabinet. And JAMA, I believe, stands for Japanese Arcade Manufacturers something arcade machine manufacturers association basically it was an industry standard that was developed i believe in the mid 80s you know before that uh, every manufacturer used a completely different pinout often for every every different game and it made it very difficult for uh, operators and owners to uh, convert uh, games or even swap in you know new games from the same manufacturer so the jama uh, standard was created and and Everyone that followed the JAMA standard, for the most part, the board just became a uh, plug and play, made things a lot easier. But games that were made before JAMA or that did not comply with the JAMA standard, you can't just plug them in. They need some sort of adapter uh, to you know, allow them to uh, be compatible. Now, sometimes the adapters are very simple and they're simply just remapping uh, the essentially the, the, the pin out, the connections to, from whatever the board expects to what the harness expects. But some others are a little bit more complicated and I've got two examples of those here. So this first one is uh, for my uh, Jungle King. Uh, and in fact, it is a Taito Classic uh, JAMA adapter. So this will work for all Taito Classic uh, games of that generation. Think elevator action and, and that sort of thing. This was made by Arcaniac. Uh, and in fact, all three of the, the makers of these JAMA adapters are manufacturers that are new to me. I've never bought anything from them before. Uh, but this came from Arcaniac, and you can see there's a few different things going on here. There's, uh, I think, jumpers that allow you to remap some of the inputs. There's a couple different connectors here. And if you look at the Jungle King board, you see it does have an edge connector, and so we'll kind of plug in the adapter into the edge connector right here. But there's also these set of header pins over here that need to be connected, and in the, the original uh, Jungle King harness, there is a, a sort of plug that comes into that. And so this adapter has a little extra harness here, plugs into the, uh, into the adapter and then plugs into the board and then sends that to uh, the JAMA compatible uh, edge connector uh, there. So that'll be good to go, hopefully, uh, for that. Uh, Frogger is also a little bit uh, different. So if you look at the Frogger PCB, we do have an edge connector right here. And so this adapter, again, will plug right into the edge connector. But Frogger did something a little bit uh, different. It used a, a remote... Uh, volume pot to control the volume of the sound and music uh, in Frogger. And if you see, there's a you know couple of uh, header pins over here, a small little set of header pins over here. That actually goes out to the volume pot uh, to allow you to control it. And I think it was supposed to be inside the coin door. So rather than going into the back of the cabinet, Sega Gremlin put uh, that volume pot in the coin door so you could just open up the coin door, change the volume, that sort of thing to make it right for whatever location you had the game at. But what a lot of people do is, they plug a generic uh, Sega jam adapter into their Frogger and they don't get sound and they think the sound is broken, right? Because the sound won't work at all unless this uh, uh, you know, header pin connector is plugged into the sound pot and whatever else uh, it goes to. You get no sound at all. So I'm hoping I'm gonna be able to solve that because again, I bought this uh, PCB set, this Frogger PCB set from Cazella's Arcade and Cazella said that he couldn't get the sound to work. I'm hoping what it was was that he just had a generic Sega uh, JAMA adapter and he didn't have one specific to Frogger. So I've got one right here from Geek PCBs. And if you see, it's got this little blue onboard um, uh, volume pot and then there's this little harness that comes off like this. So basically, again, we'll plug uh, the adapter into the edge connector and this harness goes into the header over here. And that allows us to use the, the volume pot on the adapter uh, to control the sound and we'll, it'll give us a uh, sound hopefully. So I'm hoping that's the issue here and all it was with you know Kizella's board is that the sound pot wasn't connected and by doing that, we'll be able to get sound here. I'm also hoping that that's the issue that's going on with my, uh, my Qbert board set, but that's a different uh, story for a different time. 
And then this board over here again, uh, untested at least by PhotoBoy. Um, so we'll see, uh, we'll see if we can get it working here too. So this adapter uh, will work hopefully with both of these uh, Frogger uh, PCBs or at a minimum allow us to test them. Now these first two jam adapters actually came uh, from outside the US. So Arcaniac is in uh, Canada. So this JAMA PCB uh, adapter came to me from Canada and Geek PCBs is in Australia, which is really cool. So both of these uh, sort of worldwide international solutions here. Uh, this uh, third JAM adapter is from Mobius uh, Strip uh, Technologies is I think, I think their name. They don't make a ton of stuff, at least not for arcades. They tend to make, I think more um, console game type of stuff. And this is specifically for uh, Zaxxon. So the three different Zaxxon games, all very much the same with the same pinout. So Zaxxon, uh, Super Zaxxon, and Future Spy, which is technically Zaxxon 3. And in fact, if you look really closely at the board here, you see right there in the middle, not only does it say Sega, it says Zaxxon, and this board is Sound uh, 2, I guess. So um, yeah, we'll use a Zaxxon jam adapter. And like you see, it's really simple. It just it doesn't have anything on it, no components or anything. So it's just remapping uh, the uh, the pinout from the edge connector to what the uh, JAMA harness expects. So that's basically what we've got to test here, and we're going to be testing all of this in our Superman PCB. If I can get the gimbal to uh, cooperate. So you've seen this before. This is my. Uh, Taito Superman in a Dynamo HS7. Uh, uh, we're not sure, I don't think this is, this is not really a, uh, a dedicated uh, Superman, but uh, I believe it was the first uh, kit put into this game. But anyway, I've got, it's, uh, it is a, you know, Taito uh, Superman is a JAMA game. This is a JAMA cabinet and uh, it's working right here. But what's really cool about this cabinet is it makes it really easy to plug uh, different JAMA PCBs into it. So let me go and turn this off. I've got a surge protector on top of the cabinet. Obviously you don't want to do any of this without the cabinet switched off. And then we'll come down here and I've already unlatched the uh, control panel from underneath through the uh, coin doors. We can lift up the control panel and just slide the whole thing out. And all of the electronics for the game are on this handy dandy tray. And there were several different uh, Dynamo cabinets that kind of worked like this. Slide the whole thing out, be careful not to get any wires pinched or caught on anything. And there we go, we have access to all of the uh, game electronics, including our JAMA PCB. So right here, you can see I've got uh, my Taito Superman uh, JAMA PCB uh, plugged in. We grab my screwdriver and we will disconnect this thing uh, real quick because I've got it screwed down because this is the game that I have uh, permanently installed in this cabinet. All right, get this out of the way. And uh, yeah, I've got this set up uh, in the garage, you know, intentionally to make it easy to test, uh, you know, different PCBs, either native JAMA PCBs or um, ones with an adapter. So we've got the Taito Superman JAMA PCB removed from the cabinet. And why don't we start with Jungle King? All right, I've got the JAMA adapter installed. And we'll come over here. And hopefully this thing fires right up because again, I bought it as a tested and working uh, PCB. And let me just move some things around here to <laughs> this, this PCB is a bit larger than uh, Superman. All right, I just grabbed a uh, <laughs> Ace Hardware uh, shopping bag here just to provide a little bit of insulation so they don't accidentally touch anything to anything that's not supposed to be connected. And again, this is just a temporary setup. This is not how we're gonna have the <laughs> PCB in the cabinet. All right, I think that's good. We are all plugged in. Uh, I've got the JAMA harness plugged into the JAMA adapter. There we go. And the JAMA adapter is plugged into the board, including both the edge connector and this additional harness. So hopefully, uh, 
we're good to go. Let's test it. Three, two, one. And we'll see if we get Jungle King on that monitor. There we go. Okay, cool. <laughs> now, it's upside down. But that's totally okay. Uh, some games were like that. Um, but this is great. This is working. You know, we can either rotate the monitor or we can swap the... Um, we can swap the... Uh, 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 yoke uh, wires, but look at that. We have a working Jungle King <laughs> PCB playing upside down. Let's see if I can coin up. Let's see if that would work. Let's try doing that real quick. There we go. We got a credit on. Pro try turning, starting a game. That is so cool. Now, <laughs> I'm not going to be able to do this uh, upside down. Okay. Nope. <laughs> All right. Let's see if we can do this. Here we go. Okay. Oh, I should have jumped there. All right. Let me see if I can clear the first stage at least. Playing Jungle King upside down. Have you ever seen anything so silly? Oh, no. Okay. Hold on. I'm gonna get this timing right. Okay, we got it. All right, we're good there. All right, how about, no, no. Game over. <laughs> well, you will see more from Jungle King, hopefully in the near future. In fact, I've got the cabinet just right over here. Again, it's got these terrible uh, cutouts on the side that we'll have to uh, have to repair, but I've been gathering uh, most of the parts. I think I've got basically everything I need now. Uh, a lot of these parts came from Photo, Photo Boy, like I mentioned. He also sent me the uh, the Frogger, one of the Frogger PCBs. Got all the parts sort of stored in there. Um, I need a bezel still. So if you've got a lead on a nice original uh, Taito Jungle King bezel, hit me up uh, with that. Uh, otherwise, I'll just end up buying a, a repro. There's some nice repros out there. But how's that? So far, we are one for one with uh, Jungle King working with the JAM adapter. So let's move on to Frogger. Okay, we've got our Frogger PCB uh, getting ready to go. Um, this was really, really <laughs> rough getting it on attached to the uh, to the PCB. I don't know if the um, the edge connector housing is just really uh, stiff or whatever, but I had a heck of a time getting it on. So we'll see how that goes. I'm also not 100% sure which way this uh, six, pin, six pin header connector is supposed to plug in. It could go either way, but the wires naturally want to go like this. So we'll see what that looks like for now. Also, uh, if you notice this edge connector here on the adapter for JAMA uh, is not keyed. So I'm going to have to remove carefully uh, the key that's inside of my uh, harness and put that somewhere safe so I don't lose it because I definitely don't want to do that. But uh, reading the label, it says parts side up. So we should be good to plug this into the JAMA uh, harness. You never want to plug a game uh, <laughs> upside down into a harness. That's one of the reasons why it's keyed that way. But there we go. All right, that plugs right in. So let's keep our fingers crossed that we get Frogger playing on the monitor and coming onto the speakers. Here we go. Three, two, one. Whoops, three, two, one. There we go. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, let's see, what do we got? I see something, look at that. I see Frogger. Let's turn off the uh, the house lights here, just because Frogger is a darker, bit of a darker game. Look at that. <laughs> we have Frogger running. You can't even see this. It's so dim. Uh, let me turn off, turn off some more of the lights. And uh, yeah, it's... Uh, <laughs> It's there, it's playing, I swear. Let me uh, mess with the uh, settings here. 
Okay, I have it set to auto now. You're probably, you might get a, a refresh bar uh, on the CRT, but that is a working Frogger board, at least, at least um, video wise. Let's try coining this game up. I keep hearing pops on the speaker. I don't know if that's a good sign or not. Let's see. Did you hear that? <laughs> Did you hear that? The sound's working, Cazellus. <laughs> Listen, it's loud. Oh, something happened. Something happened. Maybe I blew the speaker. Let me turn it off and turn it back on. It was really, really loud, and then all it did was kind of um, uh, move the uh, control panel a little bit, and it went it went down by like 90% on its own. So we'll see what's going on with that. Um, I don't know if there's a, a ground or something I hit, but it's working. The sound is working. Uh, maybe it's caps. Maybe I need to, um, maybe there's some caps I need to replace. Let's see. Let's try a two-player game. Yeah, I can turn it down. Maybe I blew the speaker. <laughs> I can still hear it. The sound effects are loud, but the... Um, let me turn the lights back on. Maybe I need to recap that PCB or maybe there's an amp that's dying. Uh, but you heard it, right? You heard it when I first powered it up. It was loud as all get out. So uh, I, think, uh, I think this is good. <laughs> like I said, I'll take a look and see if I need to replace a cap or... Uh... Yeah, the sound effects aren't too bad. The music's a little quiet. I'll see if there's anything um, about that, but uh, yeah, the sound effects are nice and loud. The music's quiet. You can hear it, right? Yeah, it's just a mono speaker, so. All right, I'm going to disconnect this one. I'll plug in the next uh, Frogger PCB and uh, we'll see if we have luck with that one as well. But I'd say two for two so far. All right, I actually quickly just threw the, uh, the Superman PCB in and the sound is still the original volume that I expect from uh, Superman. So yeah, maybe something weird is going on with the sound on Kazella's PCB, but hey, at least it's working. Okay, and here's Photo Boy's Frogger PCB, uh, again with the, uh, the note on it. And yeah, this, this jam adapter, it's really tight to get the thing on. Um, I, I kept worrying that I was gonna break something. Um, you know, this, uh, I didn't point it out before, this uh, edge connector on the on the, uh, the Frogger board has had some work done. It looks like it had some copper tape to repair a trace. So uh, I'm not super confident. Again, this is an untested board. So we'll see uh, what we get. Three, two, one. We'll see if we get any Frogger on the, uh, the screen here. Whoa. Okay. Uh... <laughs> we got some magic smoke. <laughs> so yeah, this, uh, this board's not so good. Uh, oh, that smells uh, kind of bad. What even was that? Let me look at, uh, <laughs> it's right by the audio. Um, let's see. Uh, is that a tantalum cap? 6.8 microfarad, 16 volt. Is that a tantalum cap? All right, well, uh, <laughs> I've heard, ooh, that smells so bad. I've heard that could happen before. Ooh, and it got the, got, uh, wow, look at that. Can you see that on the camera? Let's come in, let me take you off the tripod and show you this. 
uh, burnt up the side of the adapter here. But again, that pin oh, is not populated. So I think it just melted a little bit of the plastic. Let me, um, <laughs> that was kind of interesting. Let me go and plug the uh, the first Frogger uh, PCB, the one I got from Cazellus. And uh, hopefully it's still working. Hopefully I didn't fry this uh, jam adapter. So let me go uh, try that real quick. Okay, Cazella's Frogger PCB is plugged back in. Uh, the uh, jam adapter went on a lot easier now. I guess, I don't know if it had to um, break in the, the plastic or the pins on the, uh, the adapter, but all right, keep your fingers crossed that this is still working. Three, two, one. That was wild though. I'll have to go back and look at the video to see what kind of light show that game. It, it, it caught fire. All right, it's still working. Uh, at least the um, the audio. Let's try, or the, at least the video. Let's try the audio. All right. Yeah, the sound effects are louder than the music. Uh, I'll have to do some research. Maybe it's an amp. Uh, something like that, but uh, at least it's still working. Picture looks good. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's a little quiet cranked up all the way, but um, it should be, uh, should be okay. Let me actually show you <laughs> again what happened uh, on the, that uh, Frogger PCB. Again, you know, I got this for free, so I'm not worried about it. Totally appreciate it from uh, Photo Boy. And uh, it was sold or given to me as untested. Can you see that real close right there? Right in the middle, right there. That I think again is a tantalum cap. It's all charred black now, popped open right next to that uh, header pin set right there. Wild, and there it is right there. It's green right there. I can still see some of the green towards the bottom with this one, but look at that. Little fireworks here at Overtime Arcade. All right, let's, uh, so we're two for three, but uh, like I, I, you know, I wasn't expecting this to work. And I actually added to the notes here, tantalum fire. But um, yeah, two out of three ain't bad. Let's uh, see uh, what we can do with the Future Spy PCB. Okay, this Future Spy board is way too big. This is the only way I could get it to kind of, kind of even fit, and I don't, I don't like it. Um, but we'll do this just for testing. Here we go. We're plugged in. Three, two, one. Okay. <laughs> no fires. Not this time. But yeah, I think we are. Oh, we're not dead. Dead. Uh, we've got a rolling image on the screen. Yeah, I don't think anything's, uh, nothing doing here. All right. Um, there's like, uh, it's like purple and there's lines. Yeah, it kind of looks the same as what it does uh, in person here. Yeah, adjustings, adjusting the settings make it look about the same. On the camera, there's a really fast sort of scrolling thing here that I'm not seeing. It's kind of just jittery purple lines. So, if, uh, if you have any experience working on a <laughs> Zaxxon or Future Spy uh, hardware and you recognize this, uh, this little test switch seems to do nothing. But um, was, there a, was there an LED that was on before? I can't remember. Maybe that was OutRun. Anyway, if you recognize this uh, issue and uh, you've got any suggestions, uh, I'm all ears. So let's uh, pull the Future Spy out of the cabinet and let's start testing some golden tea boards. Okay, first up is the golden tea 99 board that came in my cabinet. And again, this wasn't working in my cabinet. I'm gonna feel really silly if this thing is actually working and all these people sent me <laughs> these extra PCBs. So three, two, one. Let's see what we get from our first golden tea board. So far, nothing. I can still smell the tantalum cap. 
from that Frogger. Nothing at all on the monitor. Dead, 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 dead. I don't know if this uh, lithium battery has to be, uh, maybe I need to replace it. That has to be uh, good for it to work. But uh, nothing at all here. Hey, yeah, and I went back and, and checked the video and I caught that tantalum cap going up in flames. So uh, not so thrilled that it happened, but I'm glad that I caught it on camera. So uh, yeah, all right, so this board is dead. Let's uh, move on to the next one. Okay, next is the untested PCB that I got from Jonavision on Clove. Again, different form factor. The previous one was sort of just a really long wide board with the edge connector in the middle. Uh, this actually has three boards, two small ones on this side and a large one on the other, but we're plugged in and ready to go. So let's see what happens. Three, two, one. We've got LEDs lit on the PCB. Uh, video is flashing, sound is flashing. They're not flashing in sync. And we've got uh, something on the screen. Did we test this board before? I feel like we tested this board before. <laughs> and maybe there is something where, um, yeah, we couldn't get past uh, this screen. Yeah. But I thought I didn't do enough uh, research. You can hear it's nice and loud. Um, yeah, there's something with this. I don't know if that's an error or whatever. So anyway, let's move on to testing uh, the PCBs that Troy sent me. Okay, here's the first PCB I pulled out of the box from Troy. Uh, this one has a, uh, a piece of painter's tape on it with a Sharpie that says working, and that is not my handwriting. And also it says trackball, uh, I think plug right there. This looks like it has a Golden T2000 uh, ROMs installed. I see a bunch of stickers that say GT2K. I'm assuming that's Golden T2000 as opposed to GT99. So anyway, let's power this up. I can still smell that tantalum cap magic smoke. It was like pink, right? Three, two, one. All right, we've got sort of solid, maybe a little bit blinking green light, yellow flashing light for sound. Are we gonna get anything on that screen, on that monitor? No. No luck, you know, we had such a strong start. We went two for two with our first two boards, including the sound working on that Frogger. But now we've got nothing Nothing going on, not so much luck lately. We had a fire, uh, we had nothing with the, uh, the future spy, that was totally dead, and then the first, uh, first two golden tees. I might, I might have tested that one from Jonavision before, but uh, yeah, my golden tee wasn't working, and in fact, you know, right after I turned off the camera, uh, it started clicking the, uh, the coin counter, so that's something weird. I've, I've had that happen before with my Tempest, but obviously extremely different hardware. So let's, uh, yeah, let's try uh, another one of these boards from Troy. Okay, the next board from Troy is actually one of the bowling ones. It says WCBD. Maybe that means World Class Bowling, World Championship Bowling, something like that. Maybe Silver Strike came later. So it's plugged in. Here we go. Three, two, one. There are some sockets that aren't populated, so I don't know if that's an issue or what. Um, also looks like a cap might be missing. Uh, we got no, yeah, the, the LEDs aren't uh, lighting up, so this could be a dead board too. So let's uh, move on to the next one. Okay, the next board that I pulled out of the box from Troy had actually all of the socketed chips removed, so we will uh, not be testing that one, obviously. Uh, the one after that is another bowling PCB. Um, again, these, these uh, ROMs have a label that says WCB, and then it's handwritten World Class Bowling, so that must be the name of the game. And then there's a handwritten sticker on the underside uh, that says has a check mark, and it says A-OK, -okay, so... Cross your fingers again, here we go with this one, three, two, one. We've got a sound flashing light, but no video light. 
But that LED might be damaged. Uh, let's see. Nothing. No video. Try coining up real quick. Nah. We got nothing. All right. Let me, uh, <laughs> let me see. Do I have any more boards in here from, from Troy? This is a very large box. No, that's our last one. All right. So I think the one that we got the farthest with was, uh, the board from Jonavision. Let me do a little bit of quick research with that one and see if there's something like with a, a test switch that's wired the, a different way or something. I thought I read something about that. Let me, let me come back real quick. Well, no matter what I tried, I could not get that uh, <laughs> Golden T99 PCB to exit the uh, options menu, whatever thing. So I'll spend some more time with it, see if there's something else to do. I was messing with the dip switches. I was messing with the battery. But uh, if you've got any tips, please let me know. So I've got the Taito Superman PCB back into the cabinet all buttoned up. And then over here... We've got uh, <laughs> the remnants of what I was, uh, what kept me occupied all evening. What did we test? Like 10 different uh, PCBs, depending on how you count, you know, including the, the one here that's got nothing populated. And you know, I guess you know, we tested the Superman PCB to make sure it was still working. Um, yeah, Brandon's still going strong. This is his sort of I'll be right back uh, message when he uh, goes and grabs a drink or... Uh, uh, swaps PCBs in his cabinet, but um, yeah, so let's review Title Jungle King from Curtis on Clav, uh sold to me tested and working and it works great No problem at all uh, This was the Frogger PCB from Kazella's arcade uh, He said it didn't have any sound and we got sound It was nice and loud at the beginning and then something happened the video volume has gone down still works uh, I can still hear everything and the sound effects are fine uh, music is a little bit low. So we were two for two, you know, with a strong start, you know, very promising. And then we moved on to the free uh, Frogger PCB untested that I got from uh, Photo Boy. So kind of him to send this to me. And uh, yep, the tantalum cap uh, caught on fire. But we caught that on camera, which is kind of cool. Here we have our uh, Future Spy PCB, dead, 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 dead as a doornail. No signs of life from that at all. Uh, and then we moved on to the Golden Tee and Bowling PCBs. My original, the one I got from Jonavision on Clove, and the, the stack that um, Troy sent me from Troy's Restorations. And uh, nothing doing there. The closest we were able to get was with the one from Jonavision, which will go into the, the test menu or the, uh, the options menu, but I can't get past that. But uh, yeah, so that was kind of interesting, interesting kind of fun. Hope you enjoyed it. Here's a bunch of the projects that are sitting, <laughs> waiting to be worked on. I'm gathering parts and everything for all these, so don't you worry. And then more over here. But uh, yeah, I think I'll uh, start to wrap up the video here. If this is your first time, thanks for coming. You know, if you like this video, hit that like button down below. It really helps me out spreading the word, getting YouTube to recommend this video to other people like you. Uh, hit that subscribe button if you don't want to miss another episode. I put out content like this, new videos, basically every Sunday. And sometimes I'll throw in a short here and there in between. I also do the Coin Jam podcast. I also do live streams from time to time. And if you really, really like this video, click that join button down below to learn more about uh, what it means to become an Overtime Arcade channel member. Basically, you throw a couple bucks a month uh, my way, $1.99, which is about seven cents a day. Uh, you get to support the channel. You get access to some awesome perks like early access to all new videos. Typically, you get to watch these things about a day in advance or channel members get to watch them about a day in advance uh, before the public does. We do a monthly members only live stream, which is a ton of fun. And you get access to our private members only Discord server, which is really a blast. Everyone hanging out, you know, shooting the breeze, talking about what they're picking up, playing, working on their collections, whatever. Uh, we've had some uh, really, you know... Uh, <laughs> I've been so thrilled. We, we got a bunch of new channel members the last couple of days. I want to give a huge shout out to our newest channel members, Ken Maynard, James V833, Stringer Films, DJ Three Stripes, Charles Klein, and Jeffrey Mays. Gentlemen, thank you so much. I hope you enjoy it. Really appreciate your support. But uh, 
yeah, if you're interested in learning more about that, hit that join button down below. But with that, I think I'll wrap it up here. Thanks for watching Overtime Arcade. I'm Charlie, and I'll see you next time. Oh, 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 overtime! overtime!